game. I think this briefcase we can keep here because we're not going to get anything to open it. Uh, dude, I just got home. Oh my god, Will. Glad you're home, dude. Glad you're home safe. Thanks for popping in to see uh, me play a game with starring Billy Cohen, my least favorite Resident Evil character, as you know. As you know, my deep hatred. And you notice we're not playing on uh, Wesker mode. <laughs> so, so yeah. I just really want to punish myself this holiday season. Grifter says, I'm sure you'll need another controller eventually. Yeah, exactly. Billy is bae. No, f, f you. <laughs> Freaking troll. <laughs> um, all right, so. Oh, snap. So, yeah, like every maybe half hour or so as we play through this, we will um, we'll open another gift because in the next in a half hour from now, it'll be midnight Joe's time. And so I will at least East Coast wise, you know, be OK to open another gift. <laughs> um, but that was a cool gift to play in charge. That's cool. And you're right, uh, Griff. I'm definitely going to need another code at some point, uh, a code, uh, another controller at some point. So, yeah, talking codes, man, talking codes. Uh, what you crazy dude? But that's why I love you, man. You know, I don't like no Billy Cohen. Oh yeah, the shotgun. No, no, no. Can she hold it? She can't even hold it. Boom. She can now. And then we can also pick up the health. Yes. I should have just dropped the bullets. I I was like, I looked right at them and I'm like, yeah, I should have just dropped the bullets. Um, well, thank you, Joe. I love you too, brother. Even though we fundamentally agree, disagree on how cool Billy Cohen is. <laughs> You're like, dude, but he's got long hair and it's like back and it's, he's got a tattoo, bro. I'm like, yeah, what is he? The rejected character design from the lead character in Countdown Vampires? Because that's what he looks like to me. If you don't know what Countdown Vampires is, uh, consider yourself lucky. Because in the 90s, I was so obsessed with survival horror games after Resident Evil that I bought every survival horror clone out there, uh, including the bad ones, um, like uh, like Countdown Vampires, but also the good ones, like um, Galarians. I actually really liked Galarians. He dead? Oh, he dead. All right. There he go. There he go. Peanut butter jelly. Oh, I need the thingy. All right, we're going to leave the health spray then. Please don't take up two slots. Oh, thank goodness. Um, <laughs> LOL, Joe says. Yes, yeah, so thank you all for being here tonight. I'm sure when I edit these, this is probably episode two of our Christmas special. And at the end of each of these episodes, uh, I'm going to open up another present that I got for Christmas. Um, so we showed off in the first episode, we showed all the stuff that I just got over the past like three months that I just haven't opened and I've just been saving. And uh, so we went over those already. And now we're getting to the actual uh, gifts from my friend Alex and his family. And that, that first one was good. The plug and play, definitely, definitely awesome. I like those things. That one, the one I, that died on us or started to die on us, um, I mean, it's still charged. still held a charge. It's not for very long, but it lasted two years. The same with the controller before the button started cramping out on us. So uh, that's that's some longevity there. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna sneeze at that. Okay, yeah, but can't we use this? No? Hmm. 
Oh, we need like the grapple gun, right? We need that nonsense. Forgot. I forgot this game has obstacles in it with solutions that you're just kind of like, huh? <laughs> what? I have to be Batman to get through this puzzle? Um, coincidentally, the guy who voiced Chris Redfield does actually voice Batman in one of the Arkham games. Just a FYI. Uh, anyone have any Christmas plans? Anyone doing anything with family? Um, anyone go anywhere? Uh, planning on going anywhere? I know, I know Grifter's answer already, but, um, anybody else? Uh, cause I know Grifter, he's just gonna do what I'm gonna do tomorrow, which is just nothing. <laughs> just chill out. Chilling out, max and relaxing all cool while shooting some b-ball outside of the school. Let's send this uh, this thing up to Billy. This is so dumb. You got to send like an ice pickup to him so he can. It's like, dude, kick the door open. Just stop being a, a wimp. You're so awesome, Billy Cohen. Why don't you kick a door open? Because the thing is, the game really tries to steer you to not play as Rebecca ever. Because the I think Shinji Mikami or somebody like when they were making this game, like one of the developers or producers, they hated. Rebecca. They were like, we hate that we have to make a prequel starring Rebecca. So they literally designed the game around to where almost instinctively you, you know, take the lead as Billy Cohen. Like it's, it's almost, it's like subliminal, uh, like mind manipulation. Uh, it's, um, they put you in these scenarios where it's like, all right, at, at this moment after this fight, you're going to, you're going to shoot this boss, the leech guy, um, with Rebecca and then you're gonna naturally stay as Rebecca probably and go up to the um, roof and fall in as Rebecca and she's gonna be trapped in this room and you're gonna play as Billy um, you know to get her out of the room you know some people did um, you know when, when they're looking through the the manual because it gives you the manual right before you go up on the roof and there's like some people did uh, switch characters but I remember like my first like two playthroughs of this, I almost instinctively just kept playing as Billy and I was like, why? I like Rebecca and I hate Billy. Why am I, why am I playing as Billy? <laughs> and that's when I realized I was being mind controlled. Uh, my wife's family comes to my house, but she will be in and out all day because she, uh, she a pet sitter. Gotcha. Um... That's pretty cool. So she's gonna she's gonna be going back and forth just watching animals. Gotcha. Um, a friend of mine's uh, wife does that too, actually. Um, I've I thought about doing that for when I was like having trouble finding work and stuff. Um, I was like, you know what? I could probably just go like walk neighborhood dogs and things like that. I just I never never pursued it because I would I would always be like, oh, I'm close to a job, you know, and then you know nothing nothing would come of it. Let's regroup. Roger. I was sitting there going like, what button do I need to press to bring Rebecca over to me? Um, I think only now we can exchange. Yeah. I'm literally going to leave this nonsense. Okay. Oh, wait, we need to equip it. The good old days of Resident Evil, where you gotta equip the weapon. Um, but that's awesome. Well, I mean, I mean, what's awesome is that you get to um, you get to hang out with family and stuff like that. But uh, you know, hopefully your wife doesn't have to leave uh, and come back too much, so we can spend a lot of time with her as well. Oh, that oh, that's it. That's it. The dog's dead now. Strange odor lingers in the cage. Yeah, but there's something there, dum dum. Oh, the gold ring. Um. Oh yeah, I think we gotta. Is the grapple gun on the back here? I think it is on the back here. I know it's like there are times where I remember this game really clearly, and there's times I do not. Um. Boom, boom.
Shazam. I like how they give you an uh, operation manual for uh, for that. This way. Okay. And then like <laughs> you really don't need it. Like it's like you're just gonna go find areas that it says, "Do you want to use the grapple gun here?" You're like, "Sure." It's not like you have to aim and get in first person and actually operate it. So the operator manual is kind of funny to me. Um, I think I'm just going to grab the gifts as they are stacked. So that way, um, oh, whoa. Uh, that way I just, we could just move through them. Um, and maybe what I'll do is I'll open two at the end of each episode. Um, that way we get through them faster. I have five left, so maybe we'll do two at the end of one episode and, and three at the end of the other. There's just so we get through them, um. And then that way, if I'm tired at that point, we can wrap it up for the night and we can play the rest of this, you know, uh, Tuesday. I may stream tomorrow night, maybe. Um, and if I do, it will be this game. But uh, but I'm otherwise, I mean, my, my plan is just to sleep tomorrow. That's what I really want to do. And I hope I get to do it because I have not been able to sleep that much. I think last night I got like a good... I, I, lately, it's been finally weighing down. I think it's just anxiety, just the stress of the season and my job and the fact that I'm in a new job. Um, and, uh, and I, and I'm kind of like at the busiest time of the year, you know? So it's, I think it's mainly just, I think it was that, I think it was psychological. Um, I mean, it had to be, cause when I went and saw my doctor, he was like, I don't, there's nothing wrong with you. There's no reason why you shouldn't be sleeping. And the fact that you're not sleeping isn't good for your health. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Thanks. Thanks doctor. Glad I paid for this trip. Poor Kevin had a similar experience with his doctor recently too. Um, I think he talked about it on the podcast. I heard him, heard him yelling at Shetty Boy about it. Um, yeah, doctors always. I don't know. They stress me out. Even though I've gone to mine for a while now, it's, it's like doesn't make it any easier. Uh, we live in the country, so she watches everything from dogs, cats to livestock. Cows, horses, chickens. Whoa, no way. Dude, a cow sitter and a chicken sitter. Pretty dope. Nice. We used to live out in an area like that. We're just like out near farmland all the time. And there was like, I think there was a golf course out there, but it was mostly, mostly farmland. Um, See, so the thing that sucks is I can't call my partner... Like, I can't call Billy um, to come join me. I have to switch to him, so we may do that uh, now that I'm in a safe room. Actually, I'll go down to where we get the briefcase, and I'll put the two trinkets in. So, well, I, I, I don't want to go too much on the tangent about this game, but I always liked that in the original Resident Evil's where you'd come back into a room where you killed something and it wasn't there anymore and you're like oh my god did he get up and move is it is it is it gonna come back um and they made a little joke about that in the first Resident Evil movie they had like um the laser room that cut up all the bodies they the team left and then when they came back to that room they were like where are the bodies where are the bodies I'm like oh okay I get it <laughs> good one Paul Anderson doesn't help the plot of the movie at all but but who cares about plot when you just do things. Oh yeah, um Billy has the other one. Dang it. So even more reason to bring him over here. All right. We're going to stay... Uh, no, we'll move out in this room. And we'll just kill anything that comes at us. I like when you switch to the other characters and they're just daydreaming. Like, Billy's just... Billy's just daydreaming. He's like... Oh, oh yeah. Stay down, zombies.
Um, I, we don't have to get into spoilers or anything because I don't know if anyone... Ever